Today we're going to cover the method of solving a quadratic equation for x by completing the square. At the top of the page is a review of the methods that you've learned so far. But remember, no matter which method you do use, you should always get the same answer. So we can solve by factoring, and I have some suggestions on when to use um, the factoring method. So when c equals zero, or you can easily factor it. The square root method, uh, when your b is zero, remember in a quadratic equation, the standard form is y equals a x squared plus b x plus c. So when you have no x term, as in x squared minus 49, you can factor that, x plus 7 times x minus 7, but it just may be shorter and quicker to move the 49 over and take the square root. Uh, by graphing, again, you only want to use that when you're looking for approximate solutions or the number of a real solution is needed, okay? Otherwise, you can um, solve using one of the other methods, but you can also just check by graphing more or less. You only want to solve by graphing really when um, it tells you to. And then quadratic formula, um, we tend to use when it's, again, we can't easily factor. We can use the quadratic formula or when the numbers are just really large or complicated, okay? All right, before we get into the steps on how to solve by completing the square, um, we're first going to look at the reason why we can solve by completing the square. And that's because we end up with a perfect square trinomial. A perfect square trinomial is one that is the square of a binomial. So here's two examples. So x squared plus 20x plus 100 factors x plus 10, x plus 10, which I can rewrite as x plus 10 squared. So here's the square of a binomial x squared minus 16x plus 64, x minus 8, x minus 8, and I get x minus 8 squares. So this is the square of the binomial x minus 8. Notice in each of these that this middle term is the double of the number, because the numbers have to be the same. So you double 10, you get 20. And then this last term, or the c, is the product of that double. So 10 times 10 is 100. So what number is, do I double to get negative 16? You could also just cut it in half. So half of negative 16 is negative 8. This sign will always match what's in the parentheses. So this is a plus, so I have plus plus. And then um, half of that squared, so 8 times 8 is 64. So to get your c value, so get the 100, to get the 64, we take half of the b value and then square it. So if I check, does 100 equal half of 20 squared? Half of 20 is 10, and 10 squared is 100. That checks. Does 64 equal half of 16 squared? Half of 16 is 8, and 8 squared is 64, so that checks. So the steps are at the top of the back page. We're going to look at four examples. We're going to use the method of completing the square when your a value is 1. And remember, a is that number in front of the x squared. If you don't have an a value of 1, such as in example number three, step number one says to divide out a GCM. So all these terms are divisible by three. I end up with x squared minus 4x minus 7 equals zero. Step number two, move the C term to one side of the equation and add two boxes to both sides of the equation. Now we add it to both to keep the equation balanced. The boxes, all the boxes are, um, are placeholders. So if you look at example one and example two, the start of these trinomials has an a value of one and this b value is even. So that's the double of some number. But if you look at the c, c is not half of two squared. 11 is not half of six squared. So these are not perfect squared trinomials. We need to make them 
perfect square trinomial. So we move the C to the other side, and I would do that by addition. And as I do that, I add in that box or placeholder. So I end up with x squared minus 2x. Those cancel out. I add in my placeholder to make that a perfect square trinomial, and 24 plus the box. Now, remember, in each box is half of the b squared. So half of 2 is 1, 1 squared, 1. So I end up with, I can combine the right side to get 25, and then I factor the trinomial that's on the left. So this factors x minus 1, x minus 1, but then we rewrite that as x minus 1 squared so that we can undo the square by taking the square root. Right now, x is a part of two expressions. I needed a part of one so I can isolate. So we take the square root, and now x minus 1 is equal to the plus or minus. Remember, when you take the square root using the square root method, you have two solutions, 5. We finish by adding the 1. And to leave it in the same format as the quadratic formula, which is x equals negative b plus or minus square root, I need that number before the plus or minus. So I write it, x equals 1 plus or minus 5. When I can actually add, meaning they're like terms, I do, or subtract. 1 plus 5 equals 6, following along the top part. Following on the bottom, 1 minus 5 is negative 4. So x equals 6 and negative 4. Remember, not a point, but a solution set. In number 2, I want to move the c value over, add in the boxes, because as we talked about, that's not a perfect square trinomial. So x squared plus 6x. Get my placeholder. Half of 6 is 3, so 3 doubles to 6, and then 3 squared is 9. I want to see if you can potentially get to the point where you don't write this step, because you're just writing this as the square of that. So if we can write it as a square to begin with, like x plus 3 squared, it's just less writing. Take the square root. Now 20 is radical 4, radical 5. Cancel, so I end up with x plus 3 equals plus or minus. 2 radical 5. Subtract the 3, and x equals, remember we want it in this format, so I want that b first, so it's negative 3 plus or minus 2 radical 5. Number 3. x squared plus 4x, well half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is not 8, so I need to make my perfect squared trinomial by moving over the c value. And we mentioned half of 4 was 2, 2 squared is 4. So I end up with x plus 2 times x plus 2, or x plus 2 squared, equals negative 4 square root. So x plus 2 equals plus or minus 2i. Subtract the 2, x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2i. And the last one. These trinomials or the start, rather, very similar, except for instead of a plus 4, we have a negative 4, which half is the 2, and then 2 squared is 4. However, this time, so let's move the 7 over to make our perfect square trinomial. Instead of being a plus 2, remember this here, the symbol is the same as that above, so it's going to be x minus 2 squared equals 11. Square root, square root, cancel. x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 11, which cannot be broken down. Add the 2, and x equals 2 plus or minus radical 11.